Tonight is the 11th annual dinner of the Lion Rock Institutes. And we are here not to celebrate the Institute so much as to celebrate the idea of economic freedom that has done so much to liberate humanity from poverty. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a very real force in Hong Kong and has been a big part of our history and our identity in this very special city. I came to this city in 1996 and fell in love with it. In 2003, there was a concern that we might lose some of the economic freedom that made Hong Kong so special if we did not work to preserve it. And in 2004, we founded the Lion Rock Institute in order to preserve that freedom. In the beginning, it was myself, Andrew Shun, uh, Andrew Shun, Pac-Man, who is here this evening, thank you very much, and Simon Lee, Lee Chao Fu, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight. And over the years, the organization has grown and our support has grown, and our support now includes the community that is seated here tonight, and for that we are very grateful to have every single one of you here in this room. I'd like you to give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you for coming. I would also like to welcome, in particular, two special guests that we have. Uh, one of them came all the way from Vancouver, Canada. He is no stranger to those of you that have been to these events before. Uh, one of, we have two guests of honor this evening, and the one that came all the way from Canada uh, is of the, of the Michael A. Walker, he holds the Michael A. Walker Chair at the Fraser Institute, which is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia. And so we'd like to welcome once again to our annual dinner, Mr. Fred McMullen. Fred, thank you for joining us. We also have another uh, very great friend of the Institute. He's come to engage in dialogue with the Institute on many occasions. He has come here all the way from Admiralty. For real, believe it or not. Uh, we're very pleased that he's always been willing to engage in debate. Uh, when I told some people uh, on RTHK this morning that this gentleman was going to be coming to our annual dinner, and they said, oh, yeah, what do you think of him? So you know what I love about this particular person is that he has always been willing to engage in the debate. Every year, uh, not every year, but if, quite frequently he comes and he talks to Line Rock and quite often we have disagreements about what we are going to say. And right now in Hong Kong, there seems to be a little bit of a supercharged political atmosphere. Things get personal, they get ugly, but never with this gentleman. He is always ready for a civil, an intellectual, and productive debate that will move Hong Kong forward. And so we're thrilled to have him back here again. Please help me welcome Hong Kong's financial secretary, Mr. John Sung. Oh, not yet, not yet. Now, one of the things we love about the free markets is that things change. And our organization has changed a little bit over the last few years. When we started at the beginning with those three people I mentioned earlier, um, we recruited a chairman because we decided that we needed, we were quite young at that time. I was the old man at about 31 years old, so we decided we needed to recruit somebody with some gray hair. As you can see, I am now well endowed in the gray hair department. I've got plenty of that on my own. But in the beginning, we recruited a gentleman named Bill Stacy, and Bill Stacy has served as the chairman of the Lion Rock Institute for the past 10 years. And Bill is not one to cling unnecessarily onto power. And after 10 years, as the organization rejuvenates and refreshes itself, he has stepped down at our chairman. He is sitting at our head table, and we are thrilled to still have him involved in the Institute. But thank you very much, Bill, for your contribution for the past 10 years. And he has been succeeded uh, right now from somebody who is no stranger to those who, of you to are friends of the Institute, and that is Peter Wong. Uh, when we started at the Institute, it was myself and Simon Lee literally working back to back just the two of us, and as we grew the organization, our next executive director uh, was a gentleman named Wallace Chan, uh, who lives in Vancouver now. And then after that came Peter Wong. And after eight years, eight years at the helm, as the executive director running the day-to-day -day operations of the organization, uh, he wanted to strike out and do some other things, but we did not let him go. We said, Peter, you must join us on the board. And with Bill stepping down, uh, we invited Peter to take over as the chairman of the Institute, and so for the first time, we are introducing Peter Wong to come and say a few words as the chairman of the Lion Rock Institute. Congratulations, Peter. There we go. Our guest of honor, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm greatly honored to be only the second chairman in the history of the Lion Rock Institute. I realize I don't deserve this position, but with government interfering in the market more and more, <laughs> people are getting less of what they deserve and more of what they don't. That's why I figured it was okay to accept it. However, this is what the Lion Rock Institute fights against. So as a stopgap measure, there is a sunset clause on my appointment, which doubles as my main task. Within six months, I am to find a new chairman for the Lion Rock Institute. Not only should the new, new chairman be good at handshaking, fist pumping, and fundraising, but also a knowledgeable spokesperson and leading example of the free market course. For example, I looked into the suitability of one of our guests of honor, Fred McMahon, but there is a socialist named Trudeau who claims to represent him, and I did not want to get involved in that. <coughs> Thankfully, I have found a far better candidate, someone bigger than all the other candidates combined, but they are so in demand that this is a work in progress. Anyway, as interim chairman, I just want to welcome you all, say a few thank yous, and also deliver some bad news. First, the bad news. In my humble opinion, the Freedom Index ranking are misleading. This is because there will always be a country ranked number one, even if none of them deserve it. The index is a sliding scale because Every country seems to be sliding downwards except in relation to, to each other. Every time when I'm asked by my friends from the Western advanced nations, the term which John may have used quite frequently, why Hong Kong always talks the index? My answer is always not because we are getting better, but rather you guys are doing worse much faster than us. To pull ourselves out of this vicious cycle, Hong Kong should hold itself to a higher standard than any other country. We should be embarrassed that we are even on the same list as mega welfare states like the USA, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. Americans at the Olympics like to say we are number one. But when it comes to economic or individual freedom, they seem to like saying we are number 20. We could not have held this event without the generous blessing of three superpowers, CLP, power assets, and town gas. Without their service, or if they run their development as efficient as our government projects like the West Kowloon Cultural District, I can guarantee Hong Kong will fall into complete darkness. Thanks also to Swire and Cathay Pacific for your, helping, for your help bringing Hong Kong to the world and vice versa. And thanks to Mr. Xi Wing Cheng for his charismatic leadership in the real estate agency industry for increasing Hong Kong properties' liquidity and thus their values. Whereas another guest of honor tonight, Mr. Zhang Zhang, has worked very hard hammering down. And also my thanks to Dr. Tong from Gaywell Group for his prediction half a year ago that John's effort has eventually become fruitful. I also would like to thank Link for willingly become scapegoat when they are demonstrating to the world one of the most successful privatization projects Yet, they are getting all the hits from rent seekers under the pre-privatization housing authority era. It would be a cliche to acknowledge how instrumental my predecessor, Bill Stacey, has been to the Lion Rock Institute's first decade. So I'll just say that no one has done more to swim against the current and what Bill has managed to do in ensuring that Hong Kong has not gone backwards too far. It is a major achievement. He remains member of our board, 
but I think we should still give him a titanium reinforced diamond encrusted handbrake to appreciate his work done. <laughs> Finally, the two co-founders, Andrew Shun and Simon Lee, who resigned from our board, deserve our double thanks. I particularly would like to thank Andrew Shun as he took up the role of executive director for the past eight months until his recent resignation. So he is the one who puts most of this gala dinner into place. Once again, we thank the co-founder for coming and we thank them for going. We have so many free marketeers who once worked with us and are now applying their ideas elsewhere. And we have so many new free marketeers coming through that we feel it's only a matter of time before we either have some big successes or get shut down. And so, having said that, I'll say no more. Thank you. <laughs>